and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Allison Clark and I'm a senior portrait and wedding photographer based out of Southern New Hampshire. And I'm also an educator for those who are just starting their own photography businesses and want to learn a little bit more on how to boost them. So yesterday, if you follow me on Instagram, you probably noticed that on my story, I said that I was going to be doing a Q&A um, for today's video. So that's what we're doing. Um, a bunch of you filled out the little like question box on my story and asked me a question. So I have a whole list of them that I wanna go through um, and they're all about different things. So hopefully this helps spark some future questions for you guys. If you have any questions, obviously, about what I talk about today, leave them in the comments below and maybe I'll do another Q&A in November. Um, but yeah, let's just dive right into it. So the first question that I got was, how do you deal with people who think that your services are too pricey? Um, and so honestly, the, when I read this, I was like, well, those people aren't your ideal client. Um, and I think that's like a common answer from a lot of photographers in the industry. Um, there's going to be a lot of people out there that are price shoppers. Um, and I remember in the early stages of my business when I was priced for the um, more budget client, I would get this a lot more. I would have people like coming and, you know, talking to me and having a consult with me and then talking to somebody else. And like the determining factor between who they chose was the price. And it wasn't because they wanted like you as a person um, or like your service specifically is that they were just making their decision based off of price. Um, so there's a couple of ways you can kind of look at this is like one, the people that are telling you that your services are too pricey, like, first of all, don't know how much like money it takes to run a photography business that like doesn't they don't know your overhead they don't know all that stuff they don't know the reason why you're charging what you charge um and this person also said like i'm a very cheap photographer compared to others so that even um like further proves this point of like like they don't like if you, even if you're just starting out you have overhead you have stuff that you have to pay for um like your website platform and your gallery delivery and your insurance and taxes and all of those things so like you have to make a certain amount of money and people that are telling you that you're too pricey doesn't mean that you are too pricey and that you should lower your prices. It just means that those people aren't your ideal client. They're not um, who you need to be serving. And then the other thing I always think of when I hear this kind of comment is um, like photography is a luxury service. Like there are things like food and shelter that people need um, that should be priced fairly because people need them to survive. Um, but photography isn't something that people need. Like a lot of people want photos um, and they want like senior photos or they want photos for their wedding. But if they have a certain budget or they, you know, it, like photography isn't um, something that they've accounted for in their budget, in their life budget, um, then that's not a commentary on you and your prices. It's a commentary on them and their, what they've prioritized in terms of what they're spending money on. Um, so again, that just goes back to like, don't change your prices just because someone's telling you too expensive. You might just be speaking to the wrong people. You're probably just speaking to the wrong, like your non-ideal client. Um, so I, my biggest piece of advice, I guess, to close this question out is to really focus on your marketing and your personal marketing and um, like, you know, being present on social media and really making sure that the copy on your website is speaking to a specific kind of person. Because right now it might be very general and people are looking at your prices and not necessarily you, but if you're speaking to a very specific kind of client, um, then people, you're going to be speaking more to obviously that client instead of like just the budget shopper. Um, so if you want people who are going to value your services and are like a specific type of person, um, then make sure that the copy on your website and that the way that you're presenting yourself on social media and the way that you're, you know, talking on social media, whether it be in your captions or your stories or whatever, um, is speaking to that ideal client. And, and you can even like when you're writing out um, your list of you know, who your ideal client is, which is something that I think every small business owner should do at the beginning stages of their business when they're trying to determine uh, how they're going to market is they should make an ideal client profile where basically like you can give your client a name and you can, you know, list out all of their attributes of like, you know, what age are they, what gender are they, um, where they like to shop, what do they like to eat, what is their personality like, um, and just kind of make sure that um, 
you know, in that list of attributes is somebody who values photography, somebody who, you know, has been looking forward to their senior pictures for years, somebody who, like, when they were a little girl dreaming about their wedding has always, like, been excited for the photo part of it. Um, and, you know, you can touch into that when you're making you know, your social media posts or your website um, and make sure that you're speaking to that person and not the budget shopper. So I hope that answered your question. Um, all in all, biggest takeaway, don't change your prices just because someone tells you, tells you you're too pricey. Um, just take that as maybe you're speaking to the wrong people. And then I got another question that kind of is similar to this one, but it's like, how much do you determine you should charge? Um, so I thought it was a good transition to ask this one next. Um, it's like, how much do you determine, how, how do you determine how much you should charge per session? Um, first things first, don't listen to, you know, other people telling you that you're too pricey. I mean, at a point, um, like if you're literally getting no business and you feel like your marketing is there, like, you know, you should determine, like you should be, you know, doing market research and what people are typically willing to spend on this kind of thing. But l most of the time there's somebody out there who's going to pay for what you're selling. Um, you just have to make sure that you're speaking to them in your marketing. But in terms of um, on the more like financial kind of side of things of like how to determine what to charge. I have a whole video kind of similar to this. Um, I'll link it down below in the description. Um, that was kind of like, how do you determine what to charge? That is a very like, you know, large overview of the like almost, uh, you know, finance accounting side of things and how to do it in a way that's smart to make sure that like you're able to pay your bills. Um, and there's a couple of different things you should look at just to kind of give you like a general answer is one, what is other people charging in your industry, like in your area, in your industry? Um, so if you are a senior photographer and you're starting out and you're trying to determine how much to charge, like, yes, you should definitely look at the mathematical side of things and be like, well, how much is my overhead? What are my personal expenses and business expenses? And then how much do I want to shoot per year? Um, and you know, I, again, I have all that math done out in a video that I'll link down below. Um, but after you look at that and you can kind of get like a range of like, okay, I'm somewhere in this also look at too, the people in your area that are doing the same thing as you are. Um, and what are they charging and how long have they been in this business and kind of gauge the range, um, for what things are priced like in your area. Cause obviously things are going to cost different in New York city than they will in a small town, you know, in New Hampshire where I live like the cost of living is just different. So the, the cost of things will obviously be different too. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so definitely consider that as well. And again, doing market research, like just talking to friends and family too and being like, I mean, don't talk to friends and family if they're not your ideal client. If these are people that are not willing to spend on photography, then that's a different thing. Um, but you can even just do some like basic research of like, okay, well, if I was offering this, like how much do you think you'd be willing to pay for this? And you can kind of gather data from different, um, all these different three points and kind of come up with, um, you know, a fair price for a session based off of all of those three different things, like people's opinions, but also the mathematical facts of like how much do you actually need to make in order to live. Um, so that was kind of a long winded answer, but again, that other video is in the description. So if you want to see the math side of things and how to determine things, um, that way you can look there, but then also thinking too about what are other people charging in my area? Um, like what's the average income in my area? You know, what do people spend on entertainment and luxury services? Or are people just like largely spending on necess necessities, stuff like that. Um, and that will help you determine how much you should be charging per session. Um, the other question I got, oh, when is your course coming out? So mm, long one today, not long one today, I'll give you the Reader's Digest. I was planning back in July, July when I filmed my course, I was hoping to launch it um, the first week of November and I had that kind of mapped out in my calendar. Um, and that was kind of, I think a little silly of me to, to set that goal because my busiest two months of the year are September and October and they were extremely busy this year. So I'm not sure why I thought that I could balance like beta testing and building like my course site and you know, like my sales pages and all that stuff and coming up with my launch week, um, like thing. So I am not quite ready to launch yet. Um, I just finished up beta testing. I, there's parts of the course that I think I'm going to refilm based off of the feedback that I got from my testers. Um, just to make sure that it's like the best possible course for you guys. Um, there are things I, in the course kind of skimmed over cause in my mind they make sense to me, but then I realized that I should have gone into more detail with them. So I'll be real refilming those those parts. Um, so I'm hoping to have it launched by the end of the year, possibly around Christmas time. So there can be like a big Christmas sale. So you can add that to your Christmas lists. Um, 
but yes, that is the goal right now is to have it done by the end of the year around Christmas time. So you can expect to see some stuff about my course on my social media and on my email list. If you haven't joined my email list, you can join down below. Um, and yes, that is kind of the, the goal of when you can see the course to be launching. Um, but the next question I got was, oh, how do you get your photos so sharp and in focus? Mine are always fuzzy. Um, so again, I have another video that's like kind of answers this question in more depth and I'll link it in the description. Um, but a couple of basic things. So for example, with like portraits, um, I like to keep uh, my aperture around between 2.2 and 2.8. Um, cause even if your lens, like if you're shooting with a 50 millimeter that can go all the way, um, like super wide to an aperture of 1.4, your depth of field is going to be very, very, very shallow. So it's going to be a lot easier for you to miss, miss focus and have things be fuzzy. Um, so make sure that your aperture, even if you are shooting portraits and you do want that super soft, creamy background, make sure that your aperture is um, tight enough that you can still get like the whole face of the person in focus. And for me, that sweet spot between 2.2 and 2.8. Uh, and then also too, if you um, in your cameras can move around the focal point um, that's in your lens, like for me on my, I shoot it with an Nikon D750 and I can actually like move around and I'm looking through the viewfinder, there's that little circle that that's the point that it's gonna focus on. I can move that around. So especially too, if I'm shooting vertically, I usually move that focus point kind of up so that I can put it over the eye of my subject. And then if I do have to recompose, it's only a little bit. It's not so much of a drastic like, you know, recompose when um, I get the focus point over the eye and then I have to move it to actually make a, a successful composition. So that could also be a problem that you might be having. Um, and then the other thing too would be your shutter speed. So if your photos are fuzzy, like there's some motion blur, your shutter speed might not be high enough. Um, so you always want to think that your shutter speed should be at least double your focal length. So if you are shooting with a 50 millimeter, your shutter speed should not go under one one hundredth of a second. So if you're shooting at a lower shutter speed in order to let more light in, what you should be doing instead um, to get sharper photos is cranking up that shutter speed. And then if you have to turn up your ISO to let more light in or to let your you know, sensor be more sensitive to that light, um, then that would be a better bet in order to get those more crispy photos. Um, so I hope they answered that question. Like I said, there's a couple of videos that I have that kind of explain this a little bit more in depth, um, like how I recompose using back button focusing, and I'll link that down below so that you can check that out. Um, but that was kind of my Reader's Digest version of that question. Um, and then the other question I got was, what website platform do you use? Um, so I use the platform Show It. So I've been in business for seven years. I started off with Squarespace. I used that for about the first three or four years of my business. Um, and I really liked Squarespace. It was super, super user friendly. Um, for anyone starting out, I always recommend Squarespace just because it, it's a really easy website builder. Um, but it's, it's a lot more professional than like Wix or Weebly that you'll find people building free sites on. Um, so it's great, it's a great middle ground because it doesn't cost as much as some of the other ones like what, uh, WordPress or Show It, um, but it's a little bit more professional and has um, better SEO than like Wix or Weebly. So definitely recommend that if you're just starting in the whole website platform or website building stage um, to go Squarespace. But if you are maybe using Wix or Squarespace or Weebly and you're looking to upgrade, again, I use Show It. Um, I have been using that for the past couple of years and I absolutely love it. It definitely has a learning curve. So if you sign up and you are like super confused, don't worry, I was in the same exact spot as you for about a solid month. Um, it once you get it, it's easy. And like, I'm pretty sure everybody you speak to about show it will say the same exact thing is when you first go in, it, it's, it's just so um, customizable because it's completely drag and drop that it gets to be overwhelming at first. But like now I can easily make changes to my website and it's like a no brainer. Um, but when you first go in, you're like, whoa, this is a lot. Um, so don't be thrown off by that. The show it help community is like so, so good. Like I spent so long in the show it help docs and speaking to like the support team and they're really, really helpful. And they'll honestly, especially if you're transferring over from Squarespace to show it or whatever, um, they're really helpful at helping you like migrate your blog and, you know, kind of helping 
you work through the kinks of like transferring those things over. So um, definitely look into Show It if you're looking for a little upgrade. Um, I use Show It and then Show It is like partnered with WordPress, I guess, for the blog part of it. So you um, can write your blogs through WordPress, and, but like design how the blog looks and show it. Um, and I find that the WordPress admin for the like blog part of it is super user friendly too. I've never had any issues with that. Um, and you'll probably have the best like SEO um, using one of those sites instead of one of the other sites like Squarespace, Wix, or Weebly. So definitely look into show it. I'll link it in the description below too so that you guys can check it out. Um, and then the last question that I got was, a fit, would you prefer 50 millimeters Sigma or Nikon? And this is a very good question that I honestly can't answer wholeheartedly because I've only ever shot with a 50 millimeter Nikon. Um, but I do have an 85 millimeter, 85, I can't speak today, 85 millimeter Sigma lens. And I also have a 35 millimeter Sigma lens. And I really love both of those, especially my 85. I shoot with that like religiously for senior portraits. And honestly, too, when it comes to like bridal portraits or like photos of couples and stuff, I'll use that one a lot as well. Um, like the 50 is a great lens for, um, it's like a really versatile lens. I guess that was the word I was looking for. Um, and I use it a lot during weddings as well, but I've never actually used the 50 millimeter from Sigma, but I can imagine that it's great knowing how much I love the 85 and the 35 that I have from Sigma. So I would say there's probably like pros and cons to both. Um, I think that there's like a lot of value in getting the same lens brand as your camera brands. Um, like I haven't found as much calibration issues with my Nikon lenses as I do like my Sigma and Tamron lenses, like having to get those calibrated every once in a while. Um, like my 35, I remember at first was like kind of weird until I calibrated it. Like photos could be soft sometimes. Um, but I do think that the Sigma lenses, and even I have some Tamron lenses, um, but I do I do really like the Sigma lenses that I have. So I can imagine that they're 15 millimeter. I think they probably have one in like their art series is really amazing. Um, so at that point, it just depends on also like your budget too. Like I'm pretty sure that the Sigma lenses are a little bit more expensive just because they're like really great glass. Um, and they just are like, I again could obsess over my 85 millimeter for days, but it was obviously like one of my most expensive lenses. So definitely take that into account as well. Whereas like my Nikon 50 millimeter um, 1.4, I think like years ago cost me like 500 bucks. Whereas like my 85, oh God, I don't even remember how much I spent on that thing. I wanna say it was like $1,300. Um, so I'm sure that the 50 millimeter would be priced somewhat similarly. Um, so again, considering your budget, but I would say that there's pros and cons to both. I love my Sigma lenses, but I've also never had an issue with my Nikon lens. So, you know, potato, potato. But that's all I have for you guys today. Those are all the questions that I got yesterday. And this is honestly kind of fun, just answering your questions. So I'll probably do this again next month. Um, also, can you believe that it's almost November? Super weird. Um, let me know in the comments below if it's any questions that you guys have about any things I talked about or if you have any further questions that you want me to consider um, when I film my next Q&A video next month. Um, I'd be happy to answer literally any of your questions, whether they be photography related or business related or personal questions. Um, and yeah, leave it a like if this video is helpful to you. If I was able to answer any questions that you've had for me um, in this video, definitely let me know. Um, and also click the link in the description if you want to download my free guide for senior photographers. Like I said, it's 100% free and it's called Posing with Confidence, Six Tips to Help You Slay Your Next Senior Session. And it's jam packed with tips to help you kind of not only pose your seniors in a more confident way in the sense that like you're communicating confidently but also make them feel really comfortable and confident in front of your camera thus resulting in like a much better client experience and more successful images which like who doesn't love all of those things so definitely check it out like I said 100% free it's just in the link in the description um, and also make sure to follow me on Instagram I am at Allison Clark Photography um, where I will post I post things there all the time I've been doing a reels series of 30 days of tips for senior photographers so if you want more tips on the daily basis definitely shoot me a follow on there as well and i hope you all have a great weekend and a wonderful halloween